Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome you to the fifth and final of our Science Week lectures for 2008. Discover Science and Engineering, in association with the Science Gallery, have brought to together some leading speakers during Science Week, and I, for one, have uh, really enjoyed the, the lectures that we've had, and I'm really looking forward to today's. Uh, anyone who's interested in programming and engineering is in for a treat. We're delighted to welcome Patrick Collison, who's a former BT Young Scientist of the Year, uh, uh, who co-founded a software com company, Automatic, which he sold this year, and he now works as Director of Engineering with the new owners based in Vancouver. Um, so a big welcome to Patrick. Um, and our MC for today is Liz Bonin. Liz first started her career presenting on RTE television, and she later moved to the UK to present on a number of TV channels. Um, she's presented a number of shows on Channel 4 and was also a regular presenter of Top of the Pops. Um, most recently, she presented the Science Friction program on RTE and she's currently working on a new BBC Science series. So I'll hand you over to Liz and Patrick. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you. Discover Science and Engineering. Um, and we've got a very special last lecture in our uh, Science Week series this afternoon. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to a young Scientist of the Year winner who was accepted into the prestigious MIT at the tender age of 17, uh, but who decided after just one term to move on and set up his own computer programming uh, company. Now, within the year, he sold this company for quite a considerable sum of money and is now the new owner's director of engineering. And all of this before the ripe old age of 20. I'm very much forward to finding out how on earth he's managed all of this, and I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for him as well. But for now, would you please put your hands together for Mr. Patrick Collinson. Great, how's it going? Um, can people hear me okay at the back? Yeah, okay. Um, so I mean, uh, despite how it might sound, um, when myself and uh, my brother John decided to start a company in, uh, I guess, January of 2007, um, it would be hard to imagine two more implausible candidates. Uh, I was 18 at the time, John was 16 in transition year, I had just finished uh, my first semester at college, and uh, we, we knew absolutely nothing about business. Uh, I mean, to us, the idea of starting a company involved, you know, picking some sort of name, uh, you know, deciding we were worth X and just sitting down and starting to write some code. Um, and uh, <laughs> when we, ma we, we made the decision to start a company together in January, uh, but we were not able to make it, uh, you know, completely definite. Uh, and so I actually went back to uh, start my second semester at college. And just as I was about to do that, uh, we decided, hey, you know, actually, we, we really were gonna do this company. John came over to Boston, um, where I was, um, to spend a month, month with me where we'd try to you know, work out initial ideas. And uh, on, on one of the first nights there in Boston, uh, we, we found that there was this, uh, in this, uh, this group, Enterprise Ireland, were holding an event in Boston uh, where they were you know, inviting prospective entrepreneurs or whatever else. And uh, I mean, we, we felt that we were pretty lucky that you know, we, we'd just got to Boston and uh, you know, we had just decided to do this company and, and here it was. I mean, there was, there was this uh, investment dinner that we could go to and you know, they were gonna give us millions of dollars and be great. Um, <laughs> and so uh, we found out about this dinner the, uh, the evening it was on. And so you know, the dinner was starting at seven o'clock or whatever and someone happened to tell us about it at I think you know, five o'clock. Um, so uh, we, we decided we were, we were gonna go to it obviously. And uh, then at maybe, you know, 6 or 6.30, we found that this was actually a formal dinner. Um, and so went to the wardrobe and looked through my extensive collection of formal t-shirts and uh, decided that none of those were perfectly appropriate. And so I mean, at around 6.30 or so, um, my, myself and John were like scurrying around the dorms at MIT trying to find people who had suits and whose suits would fit us. Uh, sometime around uh, quarter to six, we, we found something that would kind of pass. And... Um, we, uh, we, we, we took the, the subway to this dinner and, you know, kind of turned up at the door, you know, five minutes late in these sort of ill-fitting suits and uh, <laughs> asked to be let in. Um, and this, I think, was kind of a indicative of, of our general experiences. I mean, we, we, we knew absolutely nothing about how this whole process worked. Um, a, a, after this dinner in Boston, we, uh, we, just, we weren't too discouraged by our initial experiences. And myself and John uh, went back to Ireland and uh, rented a, a small office uh, in uh, the National Technology Park in Limerick. 
and uh, pretty much just uh, put our heads down and started writing some code. Uh, we knew from the beginning that we wanted to do something uh, to do with eBay. Um, we we, we kind of felt that obviously eBay had been extremely successful, uh, but they, they weren't you know innovating a whole lot. They hadn't released too many new features, and so we felt that there might be some sort of opportunity there. Um, what, what we decided to build initially was what I now describe as this combination of Amazon and Wikipedia and eBay. And uh, it was as terrible an idea as, as that sounds. Um, <laughs> but we hadn't realized that yet, and so we, we got to work on building it. Um, we, we spent the, the first three months, I guess, doing little else but uh, living and, uh, in some cases, sleeping in this uh, small office in Limerick. And uh, then, you know, as, we, as, as things move forward and as we realize that um, you know, we may want to actually launch this thing at some stage, we began to think about other questions like, you know, uh, whether we would raise some money or, you know, how we would buy servers and whatever else. Uh, up to this point, um, everything had been funded by our savings, uh, which is to say our parents. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, at this point, about three months in, we decided that uh, you know, we, we, we may actually want to raise some money. Um, we started looking at the, the various options uh, available to us in Ireland. I mean, the obvious one was uh, Enterprise Ireland, which specializes in funding you know, startup companies. Um, and you know, after our great initial experiences, we felt that that was a promising option. Um, there, there was also stuff like county enterprise boards and whatever else, and I guess also private investors. We, we had some initial discussions with uh, various organizations, I mean, both Enterprise Ireland and uh, some of the country enterprise boards. Um, but we were, I mean, <laughs> to, say, to say again, you know, we, we weren't the most promising candidates. I mean, uh, I didn't have a degree, I didn't do my leaving search. Uh, John was in transition year. We, we didn't, not only did we not have a business plan, we weren't even sure how to write one. Um, and so, uh, needless to say, uh, we, we, they, they didn't just write us a check. And so, even though we never got a definitive no from anyone, we, uh, we did not do particularly well at that front. Uh, and so things were, were looking a little bit bleak. You know, we, we had this idea which we thought might be kind of okay, but we hadn't raised any money and whatever else. Um, but then we knew of this investment group uh, based out of San Francisco uh, called Y Combinator. Uh, y Combinator specializes in providing what they call seed stage capital. That is to say, you know, uh, as, as investment amounts go, extremely small amounts of money in the region of you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand um, dollars. This was in the, in the region of what we thought we needed. Uh, we, we liked the sound of Y Combinator. Um, I knew one of the guys uh, involved in it from a couple of years previously. Um, and so we, we decided to put together an application. Uh, we applied in around you know, April of 2007, uh, and we're, we're pretty pleased when our application was accepted. Uh, and so Y Combinator, uh, as I said, is based out of San Francisco, and so we, we basically said to our, uh, to our parents, you know, again, John in transition year, me just uh, finished college, or oh, sorry, me just left college, uh, that, hey, we're, we're moving to San Francisco. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they said, fine, okay. Um, <coughs> and, uh, I mean, that's basically what happened. Um, you know, things have, been, things have been kind of okay in Ireland for the three months, but we felt that, uh, you know, our luck might be better out in San Francisco. Uh, so we went out there. Um, we, we knew nothing about the city. I mean, uh, I remember, the, in particular, the first night trying to find a place to say, stay, which was an interesting experience, but another story. Um, and... Uh, we, we met with these uh, investors from Y Combinator, you know, on our second day there. And they actually suggested that we merge with another company um, that they had uh, already invested in. Uh, this was two guys from the UK, Harjeet and Kulvir Tagar. Um, and they had, they'd been, they, they had similar ambitions to us. They also wanted to, to do something essentially competing with eBay. Uh, but they'd gone, gone about it in a slightly different way. They had built a, a marketplace for students, essentially. Um, and so we, we kind of had some discussions, talked about where it was we wanted to go. Uh, we realized that we were kind of a good fit in the sense that they had focused quite a bit on the business side and how the different business models would work. Uh, they had raised some money, whereas myself and John had pretty much just been writing code. Uh, and so in, I guess, May or so, uh, we, we decided to merge, and uh, that's how Octomatic came about. And after that merger, um, we, we immediately decided, again, that we needed to change our idea. Uh, and what we ended up deciding to build uh, was power seller tools for eBay. Basically, with eBay, or with any competitor to eBay, there's this sort of chicken and egg problem of uh, like the power of eBay. What makes it so successful is that there are that there's a huge number of sellers and a huge number of buyers, and there's this great network effect where they're all in the same place. 
and so for any competitor uh, to eBay to succeed, you kind of ne need to get the, the buyers and the sellers simultaneously in the same place. I mean, you could launch a great uh, improvement on eBay in the morning, um, and, and it would go absolutely nowhere unless you managed to like, you know, get that, that sort of confluence of, of, of inputs. Um, and we'd spent a lot of time thinking about this problem. We, we still weren't sure how we could solve it, and Automatic was, uh, was what we came up with. Automatic was going to provide a, a better interface for sellers uh, who, who were kind of, say, making a living on eBay or, you know, selling a large volume of, of, of inventory. Um, and so, you know, these were, these were frequently, I know, retired couples who had uh, started to, you know, sell the family heirlooms or something and realized that, hey, this is actually, you know, a pr pretty profitable business. Um, eBay had never really focused on these people to any great degree, had never tried to make it very easy for them. And so we decided to you know, put a, a better interface in the whole process. And that way it gets sellers starting to use our software. And then you know, when we built up some critical mass there, we would also you know, introduce some, some buyer side stuff. Um, and so we, we decided this in May. Uh, we went about building it, essentially. Um, and for the next, uh, I guess, four or five months, we did little else but sleep, eat, and, and build the software. Uh, we launched it in October of 2007, um, it did reasonably well. Uh, the, the, the reaction we got from our initial users was very positive. Um, over the preceding couple of months, you know, we tried to work as closely as we could with eBay sellers so that we could you know, get, their, get their feedback and you know, make sure that what it, what it was we were going to release would be you know, somewhat useful to these people. Um, and it, it, it mostly paid off. Uh, the, 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 we, we found out very quickly there was a huge amount of stuff we still had to do, but what we had was, was looking like it might be a pretty good idea. Um, maybe, uh, I guess, a month and a half after we launched this, we, we got our first you know, tentative expression of interest from some other company. Basically, this company came along and said, you know, they may be interested in some sort of acquisition or something like that. And because Automatic was really not the, the company we wanted to build, we initially weren't too interested in this. I mean, Automatic for us was very much a, a means to an end. This was just, you know, the, the Trojan horse by which we were going to, you know, uh, engage our much larger ambitions of competing with eBay. And so when some company suggested, you know, some sort of acquisition, it, it just, it wasn't really something that we'd ever thought much about. But then, um, then two other companies came along and said the same thing. And so by Christmas of uh, 2007, uh, we were kind of in this, uh, in this strange situation where we expected to be, you know, focusing wholeheartedly on the product and trying to grow it as fast as we could, but actually we were in negotiations with three different companies about some sort of potential acquisition. Uh, one of the companies uh, was called Live Current Media, um, and they were particularly interesting to us because uh, they were, they, even though they were a public company and, you know, had a reasonably long history, they were also reasonably small. At the time, I think they were only about maybe 30 or 40 people. And so they were, they were much larger than us, but at the same time, they, they weren't inconceivably large. They weren't the kind of organization you know, where you join them and just become a, you know, a face in the crowd. And so the, the discussions with LiveCurrent continued. And then in February, um, we ended up signing a deal with them uh, to be acquired. And uh, that, I guess, that, that finally closed in uh, May of 2008. And so you know, when, when people ask what the overriding emotions were, you know, as a result of this acquisition. It was not, you know, uh, surprise or elation or anything like that. I mean, it was, it was relief that like, hey, <laughs> in this like four month process from uh, February to May, like uh, on, on so many occasions, you know, there were various things that looked like it would sink the whole thing, that when it all managed to close successfully, it was just like, hey, shit, thank God. Um, so anyway, um, I, I mean, this means when, uh, when there was all this, uh, I guess, media attention surrounding it in, I think, March of last year. I mean, it hadn't even closed at that point. So it, it really was a long, drawn-out process. Um, and one of the questions that, uh, well, actually, sorry, I, sh I should say that uh, this, by the way, is, is the official story of Octomatic. I mean, I'm omitting all the great stories like, uh, I mean, you, you must know uh, Troy McClure from The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, so at one point, there was uh, this investor, uh, Josh Kopelman, who was a uh, you know, who had expressed some tentative interest in uh, investing in Automatic. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, we were in awe of Josh Kopelman. He had founded several, you know, extremely successful companies. And, uh, like, the, the, the notion that he might have, you know, the, the slightest interest in investing was very exciting to us. And so we arranged to have a call with him, I think it was at 2 o'clock one day, in order to, you know, give him our pitch. 
Um, and uh, I know uh, two o'clock for us was very early in the morning, but we felt we could make it. Um, we, we, we got to bed pretty late the, the night before. I think it might have been, you know, five or six o'clock or something. And uh, all I remember is, you know, at, at 11 o'clock uh, the next morning, you know, the, the, the phone started ringing and I'm kind of, you know, some sort of half asleep stupor, just like slamming the floor around me trying to find it. Eventually I pick it up and, you know, it's, hey, it's, uh, it's Josh's secretary and uh, can you hold for one second, you know, she'll put Josh on the line. I'm trying to figure out, like, what's going on? It's only 11 o'clock. And then it dawned. Uh, it was 2 o'clock Eastern time and we were in San Francisco, which is Pacific time, three hours, uh, th three hours offset. <laughs> and so, you know, Josh Dooley comes on the line and it's, uh, Josh, sorry, can you, just, can you hold on for one second while I um, get the team together? <laughs> and so uh, run into the next room and like kick the other guys awake and it's like, hey, Josh's on the line. And so uh, basically the, the three of us, myself, Harjit and Kulvi, are sort of gathered around like, you know, the, the shitty speakerphone uh, in our underwear giving our, our pitch to Josh Kopelman. <laughs> and so uh, Octomatic was, uh, I mean, in one sense it was the story I just outlined. And, uh, well, sorry, the story I initially outlined. And uh, in another sense, it was like a long series of those sort of events.